Let's bring in CBSN legal analyst Rebecca Royfe for more on what we can expect uh, from the Senate impeachment trial and how it's going to play out today. So thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Yesterday we learned who the uh, managers are right. and we learned that they all have kind of le most of them almost all of them have a legal background right Prosec prosecutorial I didn't say that properly. Yeah. Yeah. Prosecutorial. Prosecutorial background. <laughs> Um, what does their background say about how we expect this to unfold? Well, I think there are essentially two different groups of managers, and one group, sort of the Adam Schiff, Jerry Nadler group, are, are those who are really involved, maybe Hakeem Jeffries, who are really involved in the impeachment process from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. They're very familiar with the facts, and of course there's overlap, because those are also um, legal minds, but the um, the other group are, um, I think, chosen more because of their background. So they have background in either prosecution or some other kind of mm -hmm. legal work, such that they'll be um, excellent experts at presenting this evidence. Mm -hmm. So we have facts and we have facts that we need to get before a group of people in a convincing way. And so you need people who are extremely familiar with those facts, know them backward and forward, and then you need people who are skilled at getting the facts um, forward, assuming that, that there is that part of the trial in the end. Right. So part of the counter argument for the Republicans all along throughout this whole thing was not to actually argue the facts, but to argue the process. And so will they be prepared for that as yeah, well? Yeah, I mean, I think so. You know, the interesting thing is, when you think about it, is is that the House part of this proceeding is sort of like an indictment. It's the equivalent to what we prosecutors used to do when we bring charges. <clears throat> then this is supposed to be analogous to a trial. And at a trial, normally, if it were a normal criminal trial, you would have it, it's all about the facts. It's all about figuring out what happened and having a jury fact finders figure out what happened. If that's the case, then we really need witnesses. Now, if they want to say no matter what, even if the facts you say are true, there's no impeachable offense, well, that's different. Mm. So the thing is, if they decide to dismiss the charges before hearing any evidence, that is essentially saying, we don't think, even if this happened, that it's an impeachable offense. And so I think that should be clear. S -s -s Republican senators should realize what they're saying. Mm. That is the message. This is not an impeachable offense. It is not impeachable for a president to use his position for um, personal gain because if we're not contesting the facts, that's what's alleged. Mm. So for people who are watching at home and whose experience with big trials is, let's face it, even for me, like all I know about trials, having never law been in order. one, is law and order. <laughs> yeah, and Matlock. Matlock. And Matlock, when I was growing up, Perry Mason. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, that's what I know. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I, it's interesting. We could, just go, we could just go on forever about we those shows. Remember that episode? L.A. Law <laughs> yeah. was a big one right. for me Allie growing McBeal. up, right? Exactly. Yeah. McBeal. Okay. So there's a bunch of them. And so people, I think people will expect to see perhaps some of the drama, perhaps, yeah. or even some of the language yeah. that we've come to know from watching procedurals right. on television. But explain to our viewers actually how this is different from a trial that you might uh, witness here in New York City um, versus what we'll see in the Senate. Play. Right, so the, the rules of a normal trial are set. They're set by the legislature or the court. In, in state courts, frequently courts have their own rules. And their rules of evidence and the rules of procedure. This is a situation in which, oddly, the jurors are also the people who set the rules your hair a little bit. yeah are also the people who set the set the rules so um in that way it, it it isn't it doesn't follow those it doesn't follow those rules some much can happen behind closed doors some things will be presented to the public some things won't be presented to the public and if there's a real political interest in and a majority to back that interest in just shutting this thing down, that's what will happen. And mm -hmm. so it isn't the kind of procedure we're, we're, we're used to seeing where there are two sides who have e equal opportunity to kind of war it out. When the president, if the president um, is not removed, if the Senate does not uh, choose to remove the president or vote to remove the president, and by all accounts it's probably not gonna happen, um, can the president say he's been exonerated? Um, no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't think he can say that he's been exonerated. I mean, especially if there hasn't been a trial. You know, it, it depends. It depends on what happens. So, I mean, if there's a if there's a um, a trial and there is a decision among these senators um, that those facts did not amount to an impeachable offense, I don't think that's exoneration. I think mm -hmm. that's a de that's a determination that it's not. This is not 
th we, this does not rise in this political moment to an impeachable offense, and that's a political decision. Now, I, it, 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 he, will, he can say that he was exonerated, but I don't... It, but it's he can't not, say he wasn't impeached. Well, he can never say he wasn't impeached, mm -hmm. right? And impeachment itself is meaningful. I mean, the fact that somebody, ha that, you know, a, a, a group of congressmen decided that these charges were appropriate to bring um, against this president after hearing extensive evidence is significant. Mm -hmm. And that will stay. Um, he can certainly look at a trial and say, I'm not being removed from office. And that is meaningful, too. Right, um, but, if somebody, but if somebody breaks the law and the police arrest them, so bringing it back to what right. the everyday that people may be familiar, somebody breaks the law, police arrest them, but during the trial, there isn't enough evidence to convict. But the cops are convinced this person committed this act, and the judge says, well, there's not enough evidence, i got to dismiss the trial. That person, can that person say, yes. I've been exonerated? Right, of course, but yeah. the, the difference, so this is the difference. And no, it's kind of technical, but what I'm saying is if they don't, if they don't bring witnesses, the only thing that has been decided is that these facts, if true, yeah. do not amount to impeachable offense. Mm. That's it. Oh, got it. So got you it, can got it, got only it. have an exoneration in if you've had a full trial and then there's a decision that this did not either one did not happen or whatever happened, you know, is, is not does not amount to a criminal criminal act. I think that part of the challenge of talking about impeachment is that the closest thing we know is the criminal justice system. Right. But it's been said over and over again yeah. that this is a political vehicle. It's not, you know, it's not a, it, it, a part of the criminal justice it's system. A hybrid, but it's a hybrid political legal, oh. um, legal system. Right. So you can't say it's meaningless. You know, right. you can't say impeachment, which is the president has done a, a very good job of doing. Impeachment is meaningless because it was just a partisan hit. Yeah. Right. The fact that the Senate decided to dismiss the, dismiss the case is meaningless yeah. because you know neither one of those is right they're meaningful but they don't exactly mean what we think they mean in the criminal mm. um, legal context it's a different kind of meaning and I, it, it's not nothing because it's not like we in, we bring impeachment again this is the third president who's ever been impeached so there is some level on which even if it's a partisan decision it's not one we make just because there may be a political advantage in fact as many of many people have pointed out there may not be a political advantage yeah. so it, it, it isn't it isn't exactly that either so what's the purpose of having the Chief Justice John Roberts there if for example this new information that's coming out from left Parnas and some of these other associates a senator if it's driven by politics can say I don't want to hear from him because he's not even trustworthy but isn't that shouldn't that be up to the judge and not Mitch McConnell? again so this is this weird thing I know, the, so I, I'm, the I'm, Senate so it's because the Constitution gives this um, this role impeachment to the House and Senate entirely we don't have the judiciary act too powerfully so it's not that John Roberts has no power he does and he could say you know I overrule this, and then mm. that he doesn't ever has the last word, right? Mm. That always goes back to the senators, and the senators can um, reject him. Mm. However, that's not saying something. I mean, if the chief justice of the United States says, "I believe X," this is what we're doing now, and all these senators come up and say, "Like, nah, we don't agree with you. We want to dismiss the whole chart." That would be saying something to mm. the American people. So there is a he has a role, but it's a very minor role, and I and and because I think he himself will be so concerned about preserving the integrity of his own institution, his own branch, that he will be very careful about stepping into um, this political drama. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it is. Really yeah. fascinating. Uh, Rebecca, thank you so much for adding some clarity to sure. that. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs>